All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for our next Business Straight Talk webinar. So these do happen uh, most Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. We plan on being very respectful to Remembrance Day and to be concluded today by 1045 so everyone can recognize um, the day. So before we uh, get started, just want to chat um, and before I, I um, kind of introduce William Miles, just want to let you know about tomorrow's webinar. Uh, we do have Nicole French uh, from Collaborative House with a special webinar talking about uh, consumer personas and what that might mean to businesses over the Christmas holidays. So that's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Be sure to register for that. Now, without further ado, very, very excited about today's webinar because everybody has been hearing about the, the crazy real estate industry, especially in our region, Georgian Bay and north of us over the last six to eight months. So we're very proud to have one of our members, William Miles, on the call today. And William has been a real estate agent with uh, Royal LePage In Touch Realty for over five years. And he is going to tell us a little bit about what's been happening with him and the industry as a whole, um, as I say, uh, since kind of March of this year and the arrival of the pandemic. Nobody could have predicted. I don't think what uh, would have happened uh, with our real estate market. So. So William is a great community member, uh, member of the Chamber of Commerce, as well as uh, the member, uh, a member of our community as whole. He uh, also runs um, Georgian Bay Live, so uh, has lots of features on what's happening in the region, special events and that type of thing. So um, without me chatting any longer, William, um, we're gonna put you on the spot and have you chat about the real estate market, and then we'll have some discussion and questions uh, to follow. So, so what's been happening with this crazy market in our region? Well, that is a definitely a loaded <laughs> question. Uh, but yeah. first off, I just you know I'd like to say that we will uh, definitely respect the Remembrance Day timeline. Um, my both my grandparents, uh, both my grandfather's fought in World War II, so today is special to me. It's one of those days that always reminds me uh, that hey, you know what? I'm practicing real estate in the area. Uh, the community treats me very well, and um, you know I, I have those freedoms because of those soldiers and those fighters that uh, that fought for us. So um, yeah, definitely be be doing that. So I just want to throw that out there. And as far as the real estate market, wow! I mean, uh, you know, somebody lit a big fire and uh, or a little fire, you know, and then all of a sudden it just took off. Uh, I sold a house in June. And we negotiated $15,000 off that house. And it closed in June, I should say, sold it in May. Uh, two weeks later, that same house, I would bet would have sold for probably 15 or $20,000 over asking. It, the market shifted and it was just like that. And like you said, people couldn't predict it uh, with COVID. So there's been a, a big change with COVID. So we wear masks everywhere. Like I won't go into a house without a mask on. And when I'm in people's homes, I'm asking them as well, hey, you know, like you should wear a mask. They say that, you know, if both people are wearing masks, the chances are, even if I'm asymptomatic and I don't know I'm sick or you don't know you're sick, we have a lot less percentage of, of getting sick if we're both wearing them. So I always ask. So we always, we're always wearing masks everywhere we go. So that was a big change. Um, I mean, I bring hand sanitizer with me when we go in. We try to have as little touch points as possible. Before, before the pandemic, you would show a house and you know you'd open cupboards you'd you'd check uh, underneath the the sinks and you're looking at all that plumbing now what we're doing is we're we're looking at structure we're looking at quality of finishings and and, and, and we're looking so it's really more of a hands-off approach and, and actually in the very beginning uh a lot of what i was doing you know just it was just you know what we're doing right now a zoom meeting uh facetime call um whatsapp video chat facebook video chats and I would go to houses just by myself and bring my clients with me just on virtual tours so that there was less people in the homes so that, because we, you know, we still don't know, but um, things have lightened up, but now they're getting tighter. So it, it, it's very tricky. And you asked about the market. So, you, you know, like we said earlier in, in February, March, when March hit, a lot of people just 
stopped. We were told, hey, we don't know what's going on. We might not be deemed essential. At that point, I had properties that were closing. I had people whose houses that had sold that if we didn't keep going, would have actually ended up homeless or uh, trying to find a rental somewhere. And so that, that was, I think, where the decision came in was like, well, there's already all this that's done. And these people, if they don't find something at these people, and so we were deemed essential right from the very beginning. So our adaptation had to come in. And it, uh, it's been a definitely an interesting change. And even for myself, so like I said, I was only doing what was essential. So if I had clients whose house was going to close in a month and a half, well, we have to find you a home. So that's why I was doing the virtual stuff. But a lot of, a lot of that too, and as you said, I'm a, I'm a community member as, on the whole, and I shifted a lot of my focus to uh, give back let people know that you're not in this alone. We're all going through it together, just in different ways. And somebody had said this to me, you know, we're all going through the same storm, but we're just in different boats. And so my job is to, you know, if I can, is to help you uh, with your boat, you know? And so I did a little bit of some charity drives, some food bank stuff. I really was trying to uh, let the community know we're here. As you know, I support the hospital in many different ways and facets and, um, I just wanted to really uh, give back and show the community that, you know, we, we can survive this as a community. We can get through this together. I did a little uh, graduate sign campaign because as, as many people know, if you had a graduate this year, they, they, they didn't get their ceremonies. So just a little something and, and a lot of the houses I would drop a sign off and this was in June. So we'd been in it for three months thinking that we were only going to be in it for two weeks that we were told in the beginning. So a lot of the times the, the people whose houses I would get to were, were so grateful because, you know, it's tough. I mean, I'm glad I'm not a teenager, you know, I couldn't imagine being, uh, being in grade eight, going through this. That's one of your first. And I noticed that was a, that was a big uh, demographic that was ordering the signs. And they were just the first time, you know, the first time that the kids were smiling in three months and uh, it really changed things. And, uh, uh, you know, the adaptation, I think at that age is easier than, you know, say for me now, except I find that in, in my business in real estate and real estate is ever changing. Um, so right now the market is on fire. You, you go into a house, if they don't put an offer date, it might sell today and might be firm and it might be over asking, it might be at asking. Chances are it's not going to be under asking because just the way it's going. Um, and if you, if there is an offer date and what that means is um, we say, we're going to, we're going to give everybody a chance to get in the home that wants to see it. And anybody that wants to make an offer on it can, and they have to be in and we'll present at such and such time. When that happens, chances are you're going to get, could be two offers, could be five offers. I've had one with eight offers. Uh, there's been 16 offers I've seen on certain properties. If you're in what's considered a first time home buyer price range, which would be basically 450 and lower, you're going to see those. You're, it's, a, it's challenging to buy a home right now, but it's not impossible. You have to be prepared to buy it. And it's sort of a, a pay to win right now. And it's hard to evaluate a house because you go in and you think this would be great value in today's market. And then today's market says, I'm going to give you a little more. And then you get it. And then it appraises because now there's a new benchmark and then there's a new benchmark and there's a new benchmark. And we're up 51% uh, for sales. And the listings are low. The delay with new construction, which was a couple of months in the beginning. Uh, I spoke to a couple of builders in June and July and they were just getting the go-aheads to start getting back to getting those properties built. And so what we saw there was people that had sold their homes on a timeline based on moving into a new home that was supposed to be completed in say June. Well, that two month delay for their construction delayed closings by six or eight months. So then that adds an extra pressure on the market because now you've got people who were supposed to be moving into a new home that maybe don't want to sell their home anymore or are waiting now because they're not sure what's going on. So those homes will come on the market. So there'd be some resale inventory, which we're not seeing. There's pressure out of the cities. As you can imagine, when you're in a red zone, if you can get to a green zone and afford a house for cash, 
by selling a town home or a semi-detached home or a condo and then move up to our beautiful area live with a little bit of um, forest around you and put a little bit of money in the bank and be able to pay you know cash for the home or have a very small mortgage on it it's very appealing and so that's what we're seeing and that's why we need to uh, be safe that's why we need to wear our masks that's why we need to have our hand sanitizer it's everywhere i'm telling you it's everywhere in the car it's in the you know it's i put it at every listing it's it's really a different time but the pressure is just it's not letting up people always ask what do you see happening into the future i'm not psychic i don't know uh right now though you know week over week new listings to sales is down and it's been like that for months so in the beginning before it all started say we had three months worth of inventory and what that means is we would have if nothing new came on the market three months in three months there'd be no more houses to buy right now we have a little over a month what that means is if nothing comes up but it's just getting smaller and smaller the inventory and the pressure and the buyers and the people that are trying to get in the market is still there COVID has changed this. It's made it so that people are trying to get out of the cities. People are saying, well, where's the money coming from? Where are the jobs? Well, since the pandemic, people have been able to work from home. Not every job, of course, but a lot of jobs have shifted to an online working and being at home. So the quality of life in our area and the cost of living in our area, as you can imagine, is quite less than it is in Toronto and quite depending on the type of lifestyle you want to lead, of course, it's a really good lifestyle in our area. You've got water surrounding us, you've got beaches, you've got forest and trails, and you still have a lot of the amenities that the cities have. So those, so the city people are, are selling and coming up and buying houses. And that keeps the pressure on somebody that might be downsizing or somebody that might've considered upsizing, you know, like say somebody, say a young couple has a new baby, and now that's the the second child and they the, the house they bought was really great for a family of three in a starter home well they're going well during this pandemic i'm going to stay put so now that starter home that would come on the market for the first time buyers and coming on same thing for downsizers uh you know the older generation that maybe would have sold their house this year to move to a condo or maybe a new build that's being built somewhere they're deciding to hold on to it as well so it doesn't mean that when the pandemic is over, which I mean, you know, we all hope it was someday. Of course, we don't know, but we are adapting. But when you when you see that and the inventory keeps going down, there's only a couple of things you can do. So basically, new construction has to really either ramp up, or they need to open up some new developments, get some new builders. But the pressure on the market will stay until an anomaly happens, and. That could be a, an interest rate spike. I really, you know, I don't see that happening. It, it, it would be so tough on our economy for that to happen right now. And those things just, they don't come out of the blue. There's announcements, there's things made, but you never know, right? That's another thing I love about real estate is you don't know what the future holds. So today is different than yesterday and is different than tomorrow. Yeah trying to think of what else I can say about COVID and the changes, but you know, there's been times where we've been allowed to host open houses. I've been doing virtual open houses since the beginning so that nobody has to actually walk through, but you can actually, you can get a good feel for a home with, with the video. And if you really, I mean, it's hard to say, yeah, I'm going to spend $500,000 without seeing it, but seeing a virtual tour and a virtual open house taking a slower walk through it really gives you an opportunity to say you know what that space looks good to me okay we'll push forward with a, a physical showing now we're actually really interested it's so i found it a lot less people are just going to places um real estate in general <laughs> it's hot everywhere all markets pretty much everywhere within 
an hour and a half to two hours of Toronto. Toronto took a, a little bit of a drop, but it's picking up again. And it was very slight. I think everywhere did. So February and March and a little bit of April. And I think that's where the, that's where the shift really came is the slowdown came on the listings, but the buyer pressure stayed, but slowly, but then the buyer pressure built up, but the listing stayed low. Yeah. Can you unmute me? Um, William, we have a question, yeah. if you don't mind. I don't mind. So uh, the lovely folks at uh, Windley Maple Syrup, Peter and Ann Loriman are asking, so are people no longer having house inspections before buying? Well, that is a quite interesting question because in reality, they, it's, I always recommend a home inspection because for peace of mind, even if it's a brand new build, it's just for peace of mind. If you have eight offers and you really want to buy that house, you're probably not putting a home inspection in. If you want to buy it, if you really want to buy it in, in today's market, it's unfortunate. Today, the, the market is such that you need to be on top of every home that comes on the market. When the right home comes on the market, be ready. You need to basically have your financing in order. You need to have uh, a surety. You need to have a trust in who you're working with. I'm in a lot of houses. I'm not a home inspector, but I will definitely point out any like latent defects I see or anything that I think will be of concern. You know, I'm a good judge of like mechanical uh, issues. So a bit of my background is I was a licensed uh, heating technician for six years before this. And so I've been in a lot of houses. I've done construction. I've renovated houses myself. You need to have somebody that kind of knows Sometimes you can get a home inspector in for an hour. A lot of home inspectors won't do that though because they can't see everything in an hour and it's really rushed, but some home inspectors will do it because they can check attic spaces, crawl spaces, electrical panels, those types of things to give you a little bit of peace of mind. So my recommendation is if you're not comfortable without a home inspection, it's really challenging right now to win a house with a home inspection because somebody from, like I said, somebody from the city with the money is coming in, they're paying more and they're going in and saying, I want to buy this house. And the truth of the matter is when you want to, when you want to buy something, you buy it. So you just buy it and deal with the issues. You just, there are people are doing that. There are, you know, for example, there's, there could be 10 offers on a property. Out of 10 of them, six of them will all be within say 15 or 20,000 of, of asking. And one might be low, one might be at asking, four of them might be five to 15 over. But four of them will be a little bit more, like they've lost out on the last three or four properties. They've been through this process a few times. They're getting tired, it's hard. It's, it's stressful as a buyer to try to buy a home in a market where 12 other people wanna buy the same home. And so when, if you do that two or three or four times, by the fifth time, it's like, okay, what do I need to pay for this house to be mine? I don't want to do this process again. And so, okay, in that case, you know, maybe we do scratch out a home inspection. Maybe you've, you've spoken to the bank. The bank said, we'll guarantee we'll give you this much money in this market. doesn't matter what house you've got the credit to buy this, this much. So, okay. So then you go in and you buy the house because at the end of the day, it would be nice. It's just not that market. You have to be prepared. So yeah, it's it's a loaded question. But if a house is, is say, uh, overpriced, which still happens, we, we don't know what the market will do. And we're not psychic. Uh, we put a house on the market thinking, hey, this is good value. And it ends up going for, it's very rare right now, but it ends up going for 10 or 12, $15,000 under asking. It's very rare. But then in that case, you get a home inspection because nobody else is trying to buy it. But just about every other house on the market, somebody else is trying to buy it makes it very challenging. So the house you looked at today and want to think about till tomorrow, somebody saw yesterday and put the offer in today. It's challenging because you don't get a chance to go back for a second look, but it's doable because there is low inventory and decisions just get made. You know, we're still doing business. Lots of houses are still selling. It's just, you know, normally at this time of year, 
say we'd see 20 listings in a day or 15 listings. Right now we're seeing seven or five. And it's, it's just that um, as we move forward, you know, we're going to go into the winter months. In the winter months, typically we see even less houses come on the market. But we also see less people trying to buy, less people trying to drive in, in the snow and go look at houses. And you can't see certain things when the roof is covered in snow. You don't know how old it is or what condition it's in. It's harder to buy a home unconditional in the winter without being able to see foundation or roofs. So things could change. But right now, people are doing a lot of waving of those conditions and just saying, I'm done losing houses. I'm buying this one. So as for myself, I bought a house like a year ago. So just before the market kind of went crazy and we went in con unconditional, but that was because the house was on the market for a week before they were uh, looking at any offers. So we managed to get a home inspection before uh, it was actually ended. So we had that. And so we decided Okay, we're going in unconditionally and did what you're saying. We were like sick of losing out on houses. And that was a year ago. So. And the market didn't even have that this pressure a year ago. There was some, but yeah. like, for example, I listed two different, two different separate properties in November. In November, we had a meeting at the office. And this was, of course, before the pandemic, we were actually getting together. And one of the other realtors said, hey, is anybody else having their listings be shown or not shown? Like, what, what's happening with you guys? Like, I've got two listings right now and I haven't had a showing booked in a week and a half. And it was, it was sort of, yeah, I had a few listings at the time and the showings kind of dropped off. So in November, that happened. In January, I put the same two properties back on the market for, I think one I put it on for $10,000 more and one for the same price. They both sold within a week. The market shifts and changes constantly, but... Last year, there was still pressure. Now we're seeing a lot, a lot less inventory. And so that inventory is low. And now like you, a lot of times you don't even have that opportunity to go back with that home inspector. You almost need to have somebody that you can bring with you to your initial showing. And a lot of houses now, they'll only allow for half hour showings. So you can only book for 30 minutes. And typically when you get to that house, somebody is on the 30 minutes before you. And somebody shows up as you're inside. So it's really a jam-packed viewing experience. It's kind of interesting. Um, because you look at how the how the showings have to happen. They're booked till nine o'clock at night. Well, you notice it gets dark at five. And those people that see it at nine o'clock, they've lost out at four other ones. So they're going to put extra and they're going to go hard and they're going to get that house. So it's very different, but yeah, I bought wow, it. It's just highly, highly stressful. Um, I can imagine and highly competitive um, if you were in the market to buy a house. So I have a question, William. So for people that are coming up from the GTA, uh, trying to relocate and work from home, are you hearing that internet is an issue in the kind of outlying areas? Is that something that's causing an issue or? Well, you know what? I mean, if you're coming up and you're going to work from home and you're going to try to live out at the bottom of the 17th concession, you might you might have to get some satellite internet that might be spotty, right? But, you know, if you live, if you go live in like a little hamlet, uh, like Wyville or um, Waverly or Perkinsfield or Midland or Penetang, there's, you're not having internet connection issues. Okay. So... There's certain areas, there's certain pockets that really they're cottage areas, they kind of stay cottage areas, and you don't get great internet down there. But if you're looking to work from home, you know, check your service when you're out there, ask, ask me when while we're out there together. And like, I know the little areas that you don't like, I lose signal in certain places. You know, if you need to be on the phone working, you know, you might have to change your provider, uh, depending on who you're with, you know, certain providers are better in certain areas, things like that. But for the most part, we have, uh, we have good service around here and mm -hmm. uh, internet's not a problem in a lot of places. So it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's hit or miss, right? Like, but if you're trying to live out in, you know, down at the bottom of the 17th or 18th concession, you know, you're, you're probably going to have those issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So um, do you have any idea what uh, percentage might be cottages that are being sold as, you know, actual uh, recreational properties versus people who are wanting to come up here and, and, uh, and live here year round? Well, I think it's pretty consistent, even in this market, like we're, we're really like an 80%, you know, residential and 20%, maybe a little bit more 25% um, cottage sales. And it stays pretty much the same. Like you never know, right? Somebody could come up and buy a $1.5 million waterfront that could be used as a year round home. And it's got all, you know, for a million to five, you've got your heat source, you've got great insulation, new windows, waterfront, but they, they don't want to be up here year round. So they, they buy it as a cottage. Right. right. So even though it could be classified as a single family home, so it's very similar to um, basically any market that we're in, the, you know, people that haven't used their cottages will put them up anytime. And, you know, if you haven't been here for a couple of years and, you, you know, you've got a good place and you just you're paying somebody to look after it, you can't just let you can't just let it sit. You think, OK, well, you know what, maybe now is the time. And yeah, it's, it's very similar to any other market though. I don't see a big shift in, in the cottage, extra cottages or, but what I do see is, you know, people may be coming up buying cottages and because they're less expensive than say a house would be and they haven't sold, they don't need to. And they're coming up, they're, they're renovating. There's been a big shift in home improvement. So everybody's and and you know what we could see a big inventory shift next year if if things change it's hard to say but for the amount of money people didn't spend on travel vacationing um, all these things that they would normally spend money on they've gone in turn and they've bought new countertops and they've bought new cabinets they've you know they've had time at home so they're putting their own sweat equity into the value of their houses and so you know, you drive around certain neighborhoods or different neighborhoods and you see new gardens out front, you see bins in the yard. You, you know, I was talking to somebody, oh, probably about a month ago and they liked the way I, I work. They, they said, oh, you haven't knocked on my door. And I said, no, why would I knock on your door? This is why I've got a bin in front of my house and I can't tell you, I probably get two realtors a day come and knock on my door, asking me if I wanted to sell because they oh. see a bin out front. And she's like, we're not selling it. We're just, we're, we're in a point where we just want to have the house we want and we're home a lot more. So let's do the work. And it's, but there is low inventory. So, you know, how do you stop that? You know, it's, uh, it's very interesting, but a lot of home rentals going on, a lot of bathrooms being redone, a lot of kitchens, a lot of flooring, you know, and, and those, those folks are busy uh, talking to an in-ground pool specialist the other day. They are booked till 2022, most of them now. So you, pools and backyards are a big thing. Having, a, having something at home that if this gets stuck or we get trapped, not trapped, pardon me, you know, if we get unlocked down again and told we have to stay home as much as possible, people are trying to have something at their houses for, for, their, for them to do and young families and kids to do. And so it's, it's been a, that's been a big shift as well for, and that's really good for real estate because you know, a lot of those houses probably needed an update. Could we, be we, so many of our members that are um, in the home improvement um, contractors, anything to do with kind of families hunkering down and as you say, making their, their home, um, you know, uh, so much nicer for the family experience because they're not able to go anywhere. So yeah, it's just crazy. Um, we have another question, William, from uh, from Windley Farms again. And if anybody else on the line would like to ask a question, please just type that out in the chat. So Windley, Peter and Anne are asking, William, what is the inventory for medium to larger size properties that are not starter home prices? As a real estate person, how do you promote the area, social media to attract new people in the area? So I think a two part question there, William. So as far as like the, the you know, the mid-sized to, to larger size, just to give you an example, a house listed uh, on my street for 999000 and it's sold in two days for a million and 50000 And wow. just gone, just that was it. It was listed and it was sold and it was a million bucks. And I went, woohoo, um, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> now my house is worth a lot more money. So thank you. Um, because that's now the new benchmark for the neighborhood. Now that doesn't mean every house in the neighborhood. It was a good, it was a really good house and so on and so forth. But I don't see a stoppage in any price range. 
You know, you look, you think 650, 850, 900,000, it's being snatched up. A uh, million, million five. Waterfront for 2.5 million is going for 2.6 million. Uh, it is, it, it, it's it's unfathomable. And, and people, it's hard time to wrap their minds around it. I always find the consumers are usually two to three months behind what the market's actually doing. So now the consumers have caught up. So now we're listing even higher on certain properties. But as far as promoting the area goes, uh, I like to promote small businesses that are in the area. I try to do interviews with local businesses to help promote their businesses. I do, if you follow me at Georgian Bay Live, which I highly recommend, um, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely recommend that, <clears throat> pardon me. I, um, you'll see, I, I, promote, I promote all sorts of things. I promote events in the area, which since COVID has gone, you know, unfortunately a little bit to the wayside, but I'm promoting virtual events, um, get involved with the, the hospital. I get involved with the communities in the area. Um, and I promote that through my online resources. So Georgian Bay Live, Instagram, Facebook, my website. And I try to show the trails and, and different things you can do even without having to go to like a crowd event or to be uh, with a bunch of other people so that you still see the area and the beauty. Like I'll promote beaches, I'll promote trails, hiking, local businesses. And I, I put that out. I have, you know, a, a good following on Georgian Bay Live. I have, I have a, a really great email list, over a thousand people on that. So I send my promotions for every season for other businesses. Like for example, if a you know a new restaurant opened uh, in Victoria Harbor, I went out there for the opening, I helped promote them. Uh, they're, they're a new unique restaurant or I interview local artists, little things like that. Try to really showcase that there are a lot of different opportunities in our community. There is beauty all around. Like you can get on your bike in, in, in you know, a lot of places you can bike out your backyard and, and into the trail or you can go for hikes in your backyard or you drive for five minutes and you're at a beach. So there's a lot of that stuff I do and that I find helps to promote. And I've actually, you know, clients will see that what I'm doing for the community that I'm giving back and I'm doing that. So they'll reach out and then, and then they become clients and I build relationships in my business. I, I don't, uh, basically I'm not going to move in with you, but you probably never get rid of me until you talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know um and it, and, and I, I honestly I, I i still get phone calls from people i sold houses to three years ago hey william i need somebody to help me with the leaves do you think you could give me a um somebody's name for that or hey william i need somebody to help me uh put in a, ta a, a tap or a faucet or a bathtub or whatever it may be construction or you know little things and or cleaning people whatever i people reach out to me after years because I just, I, you know, I, I, want, I, I, I care about people and I want to know how they're doing. So I, I always kind of follow and go check in on you and see how things are going. And yeah, it's, it's a really interesting. And I do, I mean, I just like that, you know, I rather do things that way and, so, uh, you know, give back to the people who've given to me and this community has treated me very well. I'm, I've been here for seven years. I've been in real estate over five. They gave me my little five-year certificate hopefully coming in the mail because we have to do a virtual AGM last week. But uh, I got my five-year certificate, which in real estate, that's a pretty big deal. Not a lot of people make it five years. Uh, and in the last five years, I've been number five and number six producer out of, uh, out of my office. And, um, you know, it's really, I'm more concerned, like the, the awards are great, but I'm more concerned that I've heard so many bad stories. You know, people have had a bad experience or maybe they tried to sell it themselves and or maybe they bought themselves and they didn't know what they should be doing. And all of a sudden they got into a lemon of a house and they're going, what do we do? Um, so I've heard a lot of those bad stories. So I, I try to offer my service to everybody, but I can't help everybody, of course. But I know that what I do is I, I've been doing this long enough and been in enough houses, done enough construction stuff myself to sort of give a good idea up front. Like, um, but you know, that as far as the community promotion goes, I really love being involved and, and supporting events and, I'm looking forward to the time when we can all get back together. I remember the last event I did was with Tiny. It was their winter carnival. And then I think two weeks later, we were on a lockdown. But that was a, a fun time for the kids. And I've got three kids. So getting out to those events and, and being a part of it. And that, see, I was with I was there with Windley Farm. So hi, Anna and Peter. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was a great time. And just seeing the kids 
faces when they're getting their their maple syrup taffy uh it was it was wonderful and and so i love to do that kind of stuff um this year again it's been more challenging but i took a step back i still was doing real estate um i set a goal and, I, and unfortunately i'm I'm close, but you know, I'm just a little over halfway to the goal I set, but you know, COVID hit and it shifted things and it shifted my focus as well. I really wanted to give back to the community that supported me uh, so nicely. And I really do appreciate that. And I think that with what we've got here and all the beauty here, uh, you know, giving back and, and doing that way and promoting, promoting other people is uh, is a great feeling. It's a great way to go. And, it, and hopefully they get some, some extra, uh, help from it too because COVID's been hard on every business and everybody and you know having to be home uh you know there was there was weeks I didn't leave the house just okay we don't need to go anywhere we won't go anywhere and I know a lot of people did that and have done that um it just it it's definitely an interesting time that's for sure but yeah I definitely want to promote this community as much as possible and show people showcase like i've had people that have lived in the community for 20 years that follow me like oh my gosh i didn't know that that hike was there thank you i'm gonna go do that um oh my gosh i didn't know that that business was there i'm gonna go check them out so it's really nice and i, I can i've had like i've had businesses call me back say hey really really appreciate that you know i've had 10 people come in the store say because they saw your video they they, they came to to see what i had to offer so i'm like that's really i really love that well you you're just a wonderful community member uh, William, and I think because you have your family here and you're out to all these events and everything that you promote on Georgian Bay Live, uh, I mean, I certainly think that you go above and beyond what a normal realtor would be doing in terms of promoting local businesses and the community. So um, I have no doubt that you're busy uh, because of the profile that you have in the community. So everybody should definitely follow Georgian Bay Live and what you're doing there. Um, and Windley's just given us a thumbs up and a wow and a congratulations. So you got some big supporters there too. Thank you guys. So, yeah, I, I, I like Peter and Ann. They're wonderful people. And uh, by the way, I just did restock my maple syrup from them. And I, I recommend you get your maple syrup. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They're fantastic. Yeah, any, any other questions on the line here? I think we're gearing to wrap up before 1045 just to, again, show respect to Remembrance Day. Um, this this webinar will definitely we are recording it and it will be sent out via social media, as well as email, um, not only to members but to the community at large. So uh, if anybody has any any questions, please uh, speak now. No, but doesn't look like there's any other any other questions, William. So uh, we really do appreciate your expertise on this and. And wow, what a what a market! Um, you know, it's good for so many businesses in the area, and uh, the fact that we're thriving and uh, and flourishing even in these very strange times. So, any kind of closing remarks on that? Well, it's you know, it's interesting about about the house sales. So, a new a, a house sale actually. Um, generates income for a community as well so not just in as far as um you know the realtors and the realtors and the lawyers and people that are making money directly from the sale of a home though the people that are coming into the community will now start shopping in the community they'll they'll start buying furniture for the home in the community they'll start shopping at local businesses in the community so you know i hear it all the time all oh, the people from the city the people from the city there's some people that don't like it and that's that, that's unfortunate because once people move and this is what's amazing is we can now oh, sorry excuse me uh, pardon me sorry I there's another I, eager buyer on the line there <laughs> um <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I put it on on mute. That's okay. um, the 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 good thing about that is somebody that's working from home that has a job that may be a little bit higher pay than maybe they would find in our community right now. They they're spending that money now here. They're not going to drive back to Toronto or to Barry to do their grocery shopping. They're not going to be traveling as much outside of the area. So the the, like I said, when a house sells, you can almost attribute in the first year a hundred thousand dollar influx into the community, just from each and every aspect of that. And so it's really interesting, and it does help the community in many ways. So that's why I believe that real estate was deemed essential right from the very beginning. That's why we went to virtual open houses, and I'm still doing virtual open houses. 
I'm not trying to get too many people in one place at one time. I trust the mass. I believe it, you know, but at the same time, what do I know? I'm just a realtor. I just do what they, I follow the guidelines they tell us and I follow safe practices and I recommend that everybody does the same. And as far as Remembrance Day goes, I, I, you know, take a minute to definitely be grateful for what we do have and that we still do have our freedoms. And I know I'll be in this warm weather getting my Christmas lights up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much again, William, and um, take care, best of luck. And I hope uh, things continue to go really well for you in the market. And we'll see you out in the community soon, I hope. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll see you soon. Thank you again. Thank you.